Hello everyone, today we're gonna tie uh, one of these. This is gonna be a strip pattern and uh, it's gonna be a strip pattern that is very very close to the original uh, pedigrees or pink piglet uh, fly. The, probably the most famous uh, Danish uh, uh, sea trout fly for, for imitating a shrimp. Uh, but in, in that fly, in the original one, um, it's composed of uh, it's composed of, of spay hackles, spay hackles from whiting. But whiting has reduced their production of these spay hackles very, very drastically. So, um, so I've been looking a lot for, for alternative ways of doing this. And I've been trying a lot of different things out. Because spay is such a unique feather, then um, it's, it's simply not easy to find something that is close to. But I've done a lot of testing. A lot of tying and and this here this here is the closest thing you'll ever get to making a, a pedigrees without using the uh, the spay hackles so it's it's gonna be a shrimp pattern really really cool looking shrimp pattern that has an awesome awesome uh, movement in the water very very close to uh, to the original pedigrees but it's 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 fairly inexpensive compared to the to the spay hackles so so this is the second best thing to the spay hackles um it's close it's of course not exactly the same but it's close and uh, and as the uh, as the stocks of uh, of spay hackles just uh, evaporates all over then I foresee that this is the way that people are going to tie this uh, this this pedigrees in the future. And it looks absolutely amazing in the water. So, here goes. Now we're going to tie uh, a a craft fur pedigrees. Um Let's do this. So, here goes the uh, craft fur pedigrees. Um for this you can use a different a lot of different uh, Fly, uh, hooks, but I use the Arix Light Stinger, the NS122. This is a size 4, I think. It's easier for you to follow what I'm doing on that. But I, I use uh, the 4 and the 6 the most, and uh, I also have some 8s, uh, which is a nice size as well. So basically just cover the... Uh, cover the shank here with some tying thread for, for you to have a sound uh, a sound base for the rest of the materials. The first thing we need is is some teal feathers, uh, a teal feather, and uh, and this will make a nice contrast, and it will look like the the mouth parts of of the shrimp. So basically, just I'm tearing away the center here, and then I'm gonna fold this up, tie this down on top of the hook here. Let's take a look at how that looks. Yeah, that looks nice. I I, I would ideally want a bit more. For this part, so I'm just gonna take another feather and do exactly the same. Trim all the fluff away, and so I have this kind of V here. M mangle it a bit, and then tie it on top of the other. There we go. That's gonna be the mouth part, and and add a bit of contrast to to the rest of uh, the rest of the fly. Cut away this, and then add the shrimp eyes. If you're not familiar with the easy shrimp eyes, then I, I would urge you to, to be so because they are truly awesome. There are two eyes on the stalk here uh, and, and that just makes it so much easier to tie a fly like this and, and, and also more durable. So I take the eyes here and then I tie them down just where the tail is. As I said, this is going to be the really light version of the... Uh, of the of the pedigrees the the version that i like because uh, this is this is intended to fish more than it is to 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 look as much as a shrimp as possible so i tied down the eyes here so they will stick out on each side cutting away the rest of this and then because i i like to fish a lot with a floating line um, I'm gonna add a bit of weight. So this is non-lead wire. Just gonna add a small amount of this. This is the 0 0.20. Also, this will help make my fly uh, taper more towards the front of the fly here. So I'm just gonna tie the the stunted end of the of the easy shrimp eyes down. Just cover the the weighting here, the the non-lead wire with some. Uh, with some tying thread as well. And there you can see it perfectly aligned. 
And I'm going to take my first bundle of, uh, of craft fur. And, uh, and a piece of craft fur like this, it's important that you, you start from the bottom here and then, and then you pick out a bundle. I want preferably something along these lines in, in, what, in what I need. And you pick up the bundle here and then you cut it off all the way down to the, uh, to the actual material it's attached to. That makes it so much easier for you to use uh, use it properly and and to and to take advantage and use the full the full length of of this. Um, then I pull out all the there is a lot of, of woolly under fluff here. I'm gonna pull this out and and just remove that. We don't need this. And then I'm gonna make sure that this is not too. Uh, we don't have too many that is is really really long. So basically, kind of like making sure that this this is not, uh, of course, not uniform in length, but it it it, it has a, a certain tapering to it, and it's not too big and too bulky. Just gonna remove a bit more. There we go, and I'm gonna tie this on top of everything else just here because this is gonna be the the core of the fly. This is gonna be the the shrimp's thorn. There we go. And I tied this down onto some of the uh, non-lead wire to make the uh, to make the the transition between where I've tied a lot of the things in here and then further down as smooth as possible. So it it, it gradually becomes thinner and thinner as we move up towards the eye here. There we go. Now all that's left is actually two dubbing loops. So first I'm going to make a dubbing loop. The first dubbing loop here all the way back to where the, the, the tail or the thorn is located. And then after that, I'm gonna do just one more dubbing loop. And this, this, this trick here with the, with the craft fur in, in a dubbing loop is something that you can use for just so, so many, many things. It's perfect for all sorts of streamers, for wet flies, and even for pike flies. Uh, a really, really nice way of finishing those off is with craft fur in a loop. So now we have both of the dubbing loops. Then I'm gonna take some dubbing here, and uh, I, I I like to have my dubbings in in dispensers like this. It makes just everything so much easier to organize. And I think I have five, <laughs> twenty four of these. I just I have the cabinet full of them, just just over my shoulder. So I'm gonna take some SLF salt water in the color shell pink, because that is the perfect color for this. And then I'm going to add it to the first of the dubbing loops, which is the last one that I made. There we go. Try to get it as evenly in the, in the dubbing loop as possible. Oh. There we go. Pull it inside the dubbing loop. And then I need to add a bit more. So what I do is, is I have one finger that that is inside the dubbing loop, and then my my index finger is I can use to open the loop or to to open the loop or to close the loop. So I'm adding a bit more dubbing because that there will not be enough. And then a bit more. The SLF saltwater is actually a fairly fairly short haired dubbing. That's just, that's okay because uh, all the, all the length of this fly is gonna come from the uh, is is gonna come from the pseudo hackle we're gonna make from the from the craft fur. So then I basically just spin this, and you'll see I'll get this nice dubbing brushish esque looking thing here. Oh, I need also to move my thread all the way up to the eye here. There we go. It's a bit too bulky there in the middle, I think. So. There we go. I'm gonna turn the dubbing here. And I and of course, because it's more bulky in the in the in the beginning of the towards the eyes and the tail of the fly here, then the tapering of this is gonna be gradual and it's gonna be very natural. So you can see there is more material 
in the back of this fly than there is in the front and that is by design that is what i want because uh, a shrimp will taper down to uh, down to the tail of the of the shrimp which is the tail is going to be at the eye because this fly is 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 tied reverse so you have the eyes and everything in the back because then as you as you strip the fly here it's going to look like a shrimp that that makes a jump to escape that is the uh, the general idea here so now we have one dubbing loop left and uh, and this part here is the hardest part of the fly because to get this organized and get this working completely you have to take a bit care and you have to uh, i i think most people will have to practice a bit for for this part so what i do is is i take a fairly large bundle of the uh, of the same uh, the same uh, craft fur as we we used for the tail this is the rainish craft fur in uh, in in fluorescent uh, salmon pink the perfect color for this one so i'm going to take a fairly large bundle because a lot of this is going to be removed then i hold in uh, pretty far up i i hold the uh, hold the materials and then i remove all the all the woolly part here because we do not need this we, we're gonna make something that's gonna look like a hackle from this so so we don't need this to be too dense we don't need this to be that simply won't work in order to have this look like a hackle but because it's gonna look like a hackle we also have to to remove some of the longest of these so I hold very firmly here and then I just basically pull the longest of these out only the longest here some of these in order to get it to get it dense enough i'm going to take some of the longest now and then i'm going to put them back in here so what we have now I'll, I'll i'll show you what we have now is basically something that is not completely uniform in length not completely uniform in length but still is is not you know there's not that much difference from the shortest one to the longest one then in order to get this the the, the properties right on on this one i'm going to take here and then i'm going to measure so i want this ideally to be about the same length as from the eye to where the teal part of the tail is which is there then i'm going to cut this off as evenly as I can. I'm gonna take a look at this. This looks nice. I'm gonna take this here craft fur, place it inside my dubbing loop, making sure that my dubbing loop is not twisted, that it's open all the way down to here. There we go. Place it inside my dubbing loop. Actually, I can see that this is slightly, slightly too long. So now you see, now it is practically the same length as from the eye to the teal, to where the teal starts. Then I place this inside the loop, push it all the way up there, and then I distribute it over a big piece of the, uh, the actual dubbing loop. Because I want this to be as, as a hackle. Once I've done this, then the trick is to very, very carefully push this so it has as little as possible sticking out of the end where, where, we, where we cut it. I should have used the... Uh, I should have used the clamp for this. That would have been easier. Hmm. If I'd used, I have a clamp that I normally use, but I thought I could skip that part. But if I'd used the clamp, this then this would have been easier. 
because it's really, really important that you do not have too much, too much material sticking out on this side, because if you have that, some of these have been made, because if you have that, you're going to get a really, really bulky core of this dubbing loop, and, and that is not going to work. Let's see how this, I, I don't think this is going to, it's going to go turn out well. Uh, let's try it. Let's see how it how it turns out. You see, I, 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 it's very very important that this side of the dubbing loop is is don't have much material because if it has, you're gonna have a really really bulky center, and a really really bulky center here is just gonna make your fly look very very bulky, not very transparent, not very translucent, and not very shrimp like. Okay. I'm not sure if the results here is, is what I'm going for, but I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work, then I'm going to redo this with the clamp and show you one more time. So let's see if I can save this. I'm not sure if I can, but I'm going to try. You can see I don't have much now on, uh, on the other side, but we'll see as soon as, as soon as I have started making this, if, if it worked or if the center was... It actually, it actually turned out pretty okay. You can see some parts of this have a bit more bulky center, but it's it, it's not it's not it's not uh, gonna be a problem. It's it's gonna work. This is gonna work. And basically, what I have here now, just gonna make sure that all the fibers here are nothing is is tangled with my dubbing needle here. Just picking out if any stray fibers have been interlaced with, uh, there's a bit there as well. There we go. So now you can see, now you have this dubbing brush that is is very, very like an actual hackle. And then I'm gonna turn this and I'm gonna give it a full turn here towards the tail. And then basically I'm gonna turn this very tightly all the way up as as you would do with a with a palmer hackle all the way up towards the eye here then i'm going to tie this down with the tying thread cut away the dubbing loop i've done this a million times and it still it still gave me a bit of bit of problems <laughs> i mean it's it's such an an awesome technique but I would recommend that if, if you're going planning to, to tie some of these, then, then you know, sit down and, and get the get this technique uh, down and, and then then tie, you know, tie more than one at a time. Because uh, odds are the first one is not going to be as good as the second or the third one. And this is actually my third just today. Uh, because I've done this video in, in Danish as well. And I did one just to just as preparation. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to remove all of the, not remove, but I'm going to, I'm going to scratch out a lot of the dubbing here to give it, give it that, that effect of translucency and, and more see-through body. So I'm going to pick out as much of the, uh, as much of the dubbing as possible. You can just see how lively that craft fur is. It's, craft fur is an amazing, an amazing material. Especially the rainy one. The rainy one is the best craft fur I've ever seen. I've tried the hairlines. I've tried a lot of different stuff. But but the rainy one is just out of this world. It's just, it's longer. It's it's softer. It's just really, really cool. And then I basically, I take my dubbing brush here. Uh, this is the CF dubbing brush. Uh, it has a, a metal, metal brush here. I'm going to do what we finish. And there you have the finished the finished shrimp. And of course, you can apply this to any color you like. This works really well in tan. This works really well well in a lot of different other colors. But basically, you you have here a shrimp that is is cheap to make. Not the easiest shrimp to make because if you have a spay hackle, then it's easier just to tie one of those on and and, and basically just hammer away with with that. But but this will just this will fish and fish and fish and fish. And 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 the uh, the craft fur here, 
is just so, so lively in the water, looking so great. Ideally, I would have had a bit more both dubbing, just just a very, very small amount more of dubbing up here and uh, and also had maybe one turn more of the uh, of the uh, of, of the uh, of the dubbing brush with the craft fur because I lost some fibers due to uh, due to the way that I set it up. Um, yeah. Uh, this will definitely go in the box and it will fish, but but if you want the tapering and and stuff perfect, then yeah, uh, this one this one is 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 more perfect. It's it's a slight slight difference, but there is a small small difference here. Well, that's it. That's how you tie a craft for uh, shrimp in the uh, in the. Uh, in the in the color that has probably caught the most salmon of all colors here in uh, no, sal not salmon but sea trout here in Denmark. So, uh, Patagrisen made from craffer instead of uh, the uh, the spay hackle. Um, if you haven't done so already, it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to uh, to the channel here. Uh, that means you'll get a video, uh, no, get an email every now and then when I when I release a new video. Uh, otherwise, you can of course find the full material kit for for this fly and many many others. On, uh, on my website, that's nordiganglers.com, uh, where we have just an insane amount of fly tying, but also fly fishing gear in general. Um, so um, otherwise, all I want to do is wish you good luck out on the water. Thank you for watching.